<clears throat> hey, Kellen. Hey, Christian. Hello. Well, shoot, I clicked on meeting room. <laughs> Crap. Um, okay, stop this. Go back down here. It's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I accidentally enabled the waiting room instead of the play sound. It's Monday. <laughs> so for those of you that got stuck in the waiting room, I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, it's 401. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, we were working on 5.1 and I had gotten as far as this slide. So this is my math lab number 13 and it says use a transformation of the graph. Hang on a second, I'll get my colors here. Green, green, there we go. Okay. Um, y equals x to the fourth to graph the function. All right, so it is an even function. Well, let's look inside here. Okay, we have a negative in front of the x minus one to the fourth. So because of the negative, I know that this function is going to be upside down. So that eliminates A and C. 
And then because of the negative one on the inside of the parentheses, that means that it is going to move or not move, I guess shift. Shift is the word. It's going to shift, <laughs> shift, <laughs> shift. <laughs> uh, since it's inside the parentheses and it's a minus one, it will shift to the right one. And then because of the four here, and this is actually a plus four, that is going to shift up four. So um, the basic graph of y equals x to the fourth, that is going to be a graph that looks something like this, where it's right at the origin. So the origin point right here is going to shift one to the right, so one to the right, and then up one, two, three, four, and then this thing's going to flip upside down, so it's going to end up looking like this. So that would be choice D, because this is in quadrant one, which is where this one is. It's at one, four. You can see the point right there, one, four. This one's at negative one, four, which is in quadrant two. So that was my thought process on that one. So it's D for damn, that was easy. Okay, now uh, 14 says form a polynomial whose zeros and degree are given. And you'll notice there's nothing that talks about multiplicity. So these are three separate um, answers. And if the first, if the first zero is minus one, that means that X was equal to a minus one. But to figure out what factor it came from, set it equal to zero. So I am gonna, to set this equal to zero, I'm gonna add the one to both sides. That way this cancels out. And what I get over here is an X plus one equals zero. That's my first factor in my polynomial, X plus one. And then the next one my next zero is a one. That means that my answer was X is equal to one. But if I set that equal to zero by subtracting one on both sides, that cancels out, I get X minus one equals zero, which means that this came from a factor of X minus one. And then the last one, the seven, if X equaled a seven, and I set that equal to zero, you're just going backwards, that cancels. I get X minus seven is equal to zero. That came from the factor X minus seven. Because you know, if you factored it and you had these three factors, each one of those would be set equal to zero and you'd get X equals negative one, X equals positive one and X equals seven. I'm just going backwards. I'm taking the x equals negative one, x equals one, and x is equal to seven, and setting those equal to zero so I can actually see what the factor is. It's right here, x plus one, and then an x minus, <clears throat> x minus one, and the last one is an x minus seven. Now it does say simplify your answer, but I actually tested this <laughs> And my math lab actually took it when I typed it in right here. It didn't have me multiply it out. It, it took it, even though it says simplify your answer. 
Well, no, I mean, it does say type of polynomial with integer coefficients and a leading coefficient of, hang on a second. Maybe my notes on my paper are wrong. Let me go back to here to, where's my math lab? Get out of my sight. Is. This was number one. Number 14. What did I type in as an answer? Yep, there it is. I had done this earlier. It was a different problem, but it gave me credit for that. So if I click on my little drop down box here, I've got a green check mark next to number 14. Yes, I do. So <laughs> even though the direction said multiply it out, it didn't make me so. You know, you'd like foil the first two and then distribute the second, but hey, if it's not going to make me do it, why do the extra work that we don't need to do, right? All right, moving on. Number 17. Okay, now this one has multiplicity. Okay. Um, so on the first one, it gives me a negative six. So that means it came from an answer of x equals negative 6. And then to solve that, or set it equal to 0, I'd have to add 6 on both sides. Boom, that's gone. So I get x plus 6 equals 0. But, so that means I have an x plus 6 as one of my factors but it does say that it has a multiplicity, um, pick a different color, purple. It has a multiplicity of one. That means there's really like just a power of one here. Then our next zero is the negative three, okay? So if X equals a negative three, I would add three to get this equal to zero, cancels, which gives me x plus three is equal to zero. So that's my next factor, x plus three, except this one says a multiplicity of two. So that means I'm gonna have a two on my exponent right there. And then at the end, it says it has a degree of three. Well, this is an x plus six to the first power, which means you really have an x to the first here. And then this one's an x plus three squared. If you actually squared that out, you would get an x to the second here. And then if you distributed the x to the first times the x to the second, there's your x to the third, if you were to multiply that all out. Which again is what they're saying, type of polynomial with integer coefficients and a leading coefficient of one in the box below. But <laughs> when I typed it into my math lab, it took it like this, it did take it. Hmm. But if you wanted to do what they said, you would have to, let me switch to a green pen here. <clears throat> if you're doing this, you have x plus six times an x plus three squared. That means an x plus three times an x plus three. If I foiled that out, I would get an x squared plus, I'd have three x on the outside, three x on the inside. 3x and 3x is 6x. And then last times last is 9. But then don't forget you still have this x plus 6 here. I would then take the x and distribute it to each term in the trinomial. That would give me x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x. Then I would take the six and distribute him to all three terms. Now I'm gonna be sneaky here and line things up. Six times x squared is a six x squared. Six times six x is a 36 x. And six times nine is a 54. Pretty sneaky, huh? I lined up all my like terms. 
So I'd still have the X cubed when I add my 6x squared and 6x squared, that is 12x squared. Then when I add the 9x and the 36x, I get, uh, what, 45x? And then you still have that plus 54. <clears throat> this right here, this answer, that is a polynomial with integer, integer coefficients and a leading coefficient of one. That's really what they wanted in this box here, but my math lab took it in factored form. Because you can see it has a degree of three x cubed right there. Somebody messed up on the programming. <laughs> All right, 44. So our slide 44 covers number 19. Okay, for the polynomial function f of x equals that big old mess, answer the following questions. It says list each real zero and its multiplicity. Okay. Uh, da -dun, da -dun. Well, if you look at this factor right here, x squared plus one, if you set that equal to zero and try to f solve it to figure out, you know, what it's um, zero is, you'd subtract over the one and then you'd have to square root, but right there, oopsie, that's imaginary. That's not a real number. So you don't get anything from him. Um, for the x minus three, that would just be, if x minus three is equal to zero, x would be three. So there's only one real zero. So I'd click on A, <clears throat> and I would say the real zero of F is three with multiplicity of, three because it's really an x minus three times an x minus three times an x minus three which would give you x equals three x equals three x equals three <laughs> so <clears throat> you get three factors that are the same now that's part a b says determine whether the graph crosses or touches the x-axis at each x-intercept that's uh, the next slide, B. Okay, I don't know why I have this here. Get that out of there, okay. Um, well, there was only one x-intercept and it was the three. And because it is to an odd power, right? We can't remember what color I used. It was this one. The x equals three, and it's to an odd power. That means one end is up and the other end is down. So it's going to have to cross. It will cross at. <laughs> if you're hearing water right now, that's the kitten over there in the. I have a cat water fountain and he's sticking his head underneath of it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the graph crosses the, the x-axis at three. If it had been an even power, it would have touched it because an even power, both ends would have to be up or down. So it has to come up and just touch it right there. But since this does something like this, it's got to cross it you forget this from before. Okay, um, and then next slide, it says the maximum number of turning points on the graph is, type a whole number. Okay, the turning points will always be, or the maximum number will always be one less than the degree
So I have to look at this thing and figure out the degree. Now, when I start with the, I'm not actually gonna multiply it all out. If I were to take an X squared plus one and square it, I would start by taking an X squared times an X squared, which ultimately would give me an X to the fourth for my very first term. Any terms after that would be lower. If you come back here on the X minus three to the third, you'd be taking an X times an X times an X. So you'd ultimately get an X cubed on that. And then eventually you're gonna have to multiply the X to the fourth times the X to the third, which would give me an X to the seventh. So seven minus one leaves me with a six. So the maximum number of turning points is six. I don't have to multiply that whole thing out to see the entire polynomial. I just need to think about the very first term. Because when you multiply these things out, the very first term ultimately is your degree. And then part D says, the power function that the graph of F resembles for large values of X is, y equals, well, we already know that it's going to be an x to the seventh, okay? However, there was an a six right in front here. I really can't forget about him. Um, he's a coefficient, so he ultimately would end up right here also. So right in front, I'm actually going to say six x to the seventh, which simply means you'd be kind of tall and skinny if you have a um, whole number coefficient like that, it's going to, um, you know, stretch it out a little bit. So kind of didn't, can't forget about the coefficient, what it would be. Since there were ones, um, since there's really a one right here, and a one right here, you know, a one X squared times a one X squared is a one X to the fourth. And then a one X times a one X times a one X is a one X cubed. So that part's still just a one, but then you got this six right here. You can't forget him, so. All right, one last question from, point one. Um, it says determine whether the graph could be the graph of a polynomial function. If it could be, list the real zeros and state the degree the polynomial can have. Well, first thing I need to do is look to see, is it smooth? And is it continuous? Is it smooth? Is it continuous? Yep, it is smooth, it is continuous. I can trace that graph without picking up my pencil. I start down here and I just write and draw. There's no gaps. There's no breaks in the action there. There's no sharp corners. I did not have to pick up my pencil. So I know it's gonna be A. It does show a polynomial function. And then the real zeros are, let's see, use a comma to separate answers as needed, round to the nearest integer as needed. Um, so what I'm gonna look at, the zeros would be where it crosses the x-axis, which it crosses it here. And that is negative one, comma. And then it crosses it here. That's zero, comma, and it crosses it here, and that is five. So it's got three zeros, 
and the the least degree the polynomial can have is the least degree would be x cubed because I know there's at least one, two, three x intercepts. Now it's possible that there's some more curves in this where the zeros would be like imaginary numbers. You know, like if it were to, um, if it were to do this somewhere down here, you know, I got some more curves, but they don't touch the x-axis. So it's possible that it's an x to the fifth or an x to the seventh or an x to the ninth, some other odd function. It's possible. <clears throat> so at most it has three, or at least, sorry, at least it has three for sure. And that finishes up 5.1. Any questions on that? Anybody got any questions? Okay. All right, so section 5.2. Get this in the screen. There we go. All right. Okay, what we're going to do in this section is analyze the graph of a polynomial function. So here's an example of how to analyze the graph of a polynomial function. They have given me a polynomial function that would be, let's see, I got it. I can see that my zeros are, this zero right here would be a one half with a multiplicity of one. This zero would be subtract one divided by two, negative one half multiplicity of one. And this is a negative three with a multiplicity of two, which is what I think they showed right here. Okay, nope, they expanded it. Determine the end behavior of the graph. They expanded it. They started with the x plus three squared. And when they squared it out, they got x squared plus six x plus nine. And they also, okay, interesting. <laughs> they took the 2x minus 1 times the 2x plus 1, multiplied that, and got, because they were conjugates, they're almost identical except one's a minus and one's a plus, so they got a difference of two squares. And then they went through and distributed the... Um, they distributed the 4x to the x squared. That gave them 4x to the fourth. Then the 4x to the 6x, which gave them 24x cubed. And then the 4x to the 9, which gave them a 36x squared. Then they went back and got the minus 1 times x squared. That gives them this minus x. Minus 1 times 6x is minus 6x. And a minus one times positive nine is a minus nine. So let's see, the only like terms that they had was these two here. Those two added up to the 35x squared. They still had the 4x to the fourth and the 24x cubed and the minus 6x and the minus nine and added those. Okay, so. They can now clearly see that the leading coefficient or the leading term here, this guy here, 4x to the fourth, the graph behaves like 4x to the fourth for large values of x. It has a degree of four. Okay, next slide. I'll find the x and y intercepts, okay. Um, the y-intercept is when x is zero. 
So they plugged zero. Let me go back one slide because I didn't show the work here. But if you were to stick the zero, different color here. If you were to stick zero here and here and here and here, those would all be zeros and you'd only be left with the negative nine. That's where they got the y-intercept is negative nine. Boom, right there. If x is zero, y is negative nine. To find the x-intercepts, that's when you set it equal to zero, which is what I showed back on that first slide. They took each one of these and then you can see that x is equal to one half, x is equal to negative one half, and x is equal to negative three. Those are the x-intercepts from the 2x minus one, 2x plus one, and x plus three. Okay. And determine the zeros of the function. Those are the zeros and then their multiplicity. So, yep, the zeros of plus or minus one half have multiplicity of one. And then the zero of negative three has a multiplicity of two. So the graph of, X, of F touches the x-axis at negative three. If you have an even power, if it's a multiplicity of two or four or six or eight, it will touch the x-axis. If it has an odd power, like one or three or five or seven, it will cross the x-axis at those points. It crosses the x-axis at those. And determine the maximum number of turning points. Okay. Uh, the degree was four, right? The degree was four. So at most, it will have four minus one, which is three turning points. And now they're looking at this. The figure illustrates the information obtained from steps one through four. So you can see that, let me get a bright pink color here. It crosses at negative three, negative a half, positive a half, and it said it would touch, it's touching, at the negative three, so it's coming down, it touches it and then goes back up again. That's touching. But then over here at negative one half to the left of that point, it's in quadrant two, to the right of that point, it's in quadrant um, three. It had a y-intercept at negative nine and then for um, positive one half, it also crosses there. So it's got to be above it in one of the quadrants and below it in the other. So obviously it intersects right there at the y-intercept. And then it looks like they just picked a couple of more points to get a good idea of what it looks like. Um, let's see, they picked, they plugged in f of negative four, which gave them 63. So at negative four, it's way up here somewhere at 63. <laughs> and then they picked um, f of negative two. They plugged the negative two into the formula or the equation and got 15 out of it. So negative two, 15. Okay, they have labeled the y-axis. This is zero up to 60. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each one's 10, right? Yep. So at negative two, it's at 15, which would be right about there-ish. Right about there-ish. So it looks like it's doing this-ish. It's got to be doing something like that right there-ish. And then, of course, this over here does this-ish. And I'm running out of colors. How about go back to the gray? 
And then we got f of negative one is at 12. Oh, well, that was this ish here. Okay, so we're connecting more. And one more um, dark purple. F of one is 48. F of one is 48 would be 10, 20, 30, 48 ish, somewhere up here ish, which connects that ish. And that's what the graph kind of looks like, which I think is what they show in the next slide. There it is. They connected all the dots and kind of got that W shape, which, you know, is what an X to the fourth kind of looks like. And it was a positive X to the fourth. So both ends are up. So um, in my math lab, you just have quite a few questions here where you just kind of go through this process. And I know they, they, what were their steps? Their step one was determine the end behavior, which is just the degree. And they multiplied the whole thing out, but you really don't have to. I could have looked at this and said, I have, well here, let me, let me rewrite it up here. I mean, they multiplied this whole sucker out, but I can tell what the degree is without doing all this algebra. Okay, so you have an x to the first and another x to the first. And then over here you have an x which is to the first, but it would get squared. So that would be an x squared. So really what I have here is x to the first times x to the first, x to the first times x to the first times x squared, there's my x to the fourth. And if I needed to know the leading coefficient, I would simply take two times two times the one right here. And two times two times one would be the four. And you can see that 4x to the fourth is what they got right there. Look at that. Without doing all that algebra. Not to say that doing all that algebra wouldn't be fun because it would. You know, I don't want to deprive you the joy if you, you know, want to do it. So, and then they found x and y intercepts. And then they found the zeros and figured out multiplicity and how many turning points maximum they would have. And then they found a few more points to kind of, you know, fill in the gaps to get a good idea what it's doing. And there's a graph. Now your graphs are actually gonna be multiple guess. So let's go to number three. This says analyze the function Okay, and they take you down into parts, so just do whatever they ask you to do first. It says, determine the end behavior of the graph. The graph behaves like y equals, and it's simply going to be whatever the very first term is in the polynomial if you were to multiply it out. Now, in this one, to multiply it out, all I have to do is the distributive property, so... I have this f of x is equal to x squared times an x plus 4. All you'd have to do is distribute this. x squared times x is x cubed. I don't even have to multiply x squared times 4. All I want is that very first guy. That is what will go inside this box right here. The graph of f behaves like a 1x cubed graph for large values of absolute value of x. That's it for part a. All right, then it says find the x and y intercepts. Looks like they want you to find the x intercepts first. Okay, x intercepts. The x intercepts is when y is equal to zero, or in this case, f of x. So you're gonna stick a zero right there. Zero is equal to x squared times x plus four. 
So if x squared is equal to zero, then that means x is zero. And if x plus four is equal to zero, x would have to be a negative four. Those are my x-intercepts. Simplify your answer, type an integer or a fraction, use a comma, so zero comma negative four. And they want the y-intercepts. The y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. So y is going to equal zero squared times zero plus four, which would be zero times four, which would be zero. Boop. Boop. Moving right along. Uh, determine the zeros. The zeros are the same thing as the x-intercepts. Anybody remembers that? The zeros are the same as the x-intercepts. And my x-intercepts were, if I just go back and look, my x-intercepts were 0 and negative 4. So 0 comma negative 4. Now, this is where they ask you about the multiplicity. All right, so I got 0 and I got negative 4. They say the lesser 0. The lesser 0 would be negative 4 because negative four is smaller than zero. So the negative four, if I look up here, negative four came from right there, the x plus four, and that has a multiplicity of one. The lesser zero of the function is of multiplicity one. So the graph, and there's two drop down boxes here, I could only, um, this one and this one both give you choices of either crosses or touches, okay? Since it's a odd multiplicity, it's going to, you would choose crosses. The graph of F crosses the X axis at X is equal to the negative four. That is the lesser zero. And then the greater zero, which would be zero, <laughs> um, that came from this guy right here, which has an exponent of two. That is an odd multiplicity. Multiplicity of two, so the graph touches. The x-axis at x is equal to zero. Zero was the zero. <laughs> Sorry, a cat's doing it again. It sounds like somebody's peeing over there. <laughs> Can anybody hear that water? I'm just curious. Anybody? Are you all there? <laughs> I'm here. Did you hear that water running? <laughs> uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, continued. Number three. Determine the maximum number of turning points. Um, it was, let's see, it was a degree of three, right? The degree was three, so three minus one equals two. At most, there'll be two turning points. All right, and now part E is multiple guess. Pick a graph, any graph. Um, okay, this graph, when I multiplied it out, it was a positive x cubed. 
So that means one end is up and the other end is down, but since it's a positive x cubed, it starts pointing down and ends pointing up in the positive direction, right? That's my positive. So it's gotta have that basic shape to it. So that would eliminate B, because this one ends going down, and C, because this one ends going down. All right, we're looking for a graph that ends going up. So it's either A or D. And then I would use my intercepts. It, what did we figure out with that multiplicity? Um, for, for the X squared, that was where x is equal to zero so and it was a squared so it has to touch at zero and then for the x plus four which is to the first that's going to cross at negative four so it's got to touch at zero and cross at negative four. That would be choice D. If you look at choice D, it's crossing at negative four and it's touching at zero. I'm trying to hide, oops, sorry. There we go. If you look at A, it's definitely touching at zero, but it's crossing, this one crosses at positive four. We need a negative four, so it's gotta be D. <clears throat> Hope you're understanding the touching and crossing. And if you think about it, um, x squared, an x squared has a, you know, that's a parabola, right? This right here kind of looks like a parabola, both of these, where I'm highlighting it in the purpley color. It's got that, you know, curvy shape, kind of has a parabolic look to it. Whereas the um, x plus four, which is to the first power, that has a linear look. So this is kind of linear right here, it's straight. Same thing here, it's straight. It's crossing like a straight line would. So right around that point, it has a linear feel to it or a linear look, not the whole graph, just like right in that general area, it's kind of, you know, straight. All right, remember, I only did three examples, so six. Uh, analyze the polynomial function using parts A through. Okay, determine the end behavior of the graph of the function. Well, again, without working it all the way through, I mean, I could work it out, but all they want is the very first term. So if you take your x plus four and square it, that's gonna give you an x squared and then some more stuff. And then if you go back here and take this x minus five and square it, the first term over here would be an x squared. And then you're gonna multiply those together eventually, because you'd have to do some more multiplication. And the very first term would be a one x to the fourth. So x to the fourth is what you'll put in this box right here. without having to multiply it all out, unless you just want to, because you enjoy doing that kind of thing. Okay, next, find the x and y intercepts. The x intercepts are, that is where f of x is equal to zero. So, you're just gonna put zero right here. You're gonna say zero is equal to x plus four squared times an x minus five squared. 
And then the x plus 4, if you set that equal to 0, x would have to equal a uh, negative 4, because negative 4 plus 4 makes that 0. And then this x minus 5, if that equals the 0, you'd have to add 5 to both sides. So those are my two x-intercepts, negative 4 and positive 5 right here. And then the y-intercept is when x is equal to a 0. So we are going to take 0 and stick it here and here. So um, so I'm going to have a 0 here and a zero there. Um, zero plus four is four, and then four squared is 16. And then over here, zero minus five is a minus five, but minus five squared, a negative times a negative, is a positive 25. And then you're gonna multiply 16 times 25, which is big ass number. 400. Good God, I don't want to graph that. <laughs> and that's what's going to go in this box right there, 400. So x and y intercepts. All right, determine the zeros. Well, the zeros are the same thing as the x-intercepts, which were, how can I forget this so soon? I was just looking at it. Negative four and positive five. Okay, but we've got to look at them. The lesser zero, let's see, the negative four, the lesser zero, that would be this one. And it has a multiplicity of two. All right, so the lesser zero has a multiplicity of two. So the graph, and again, you've got this drop down box here, here and here, and your choices are crosses or touches. So since that is an even multiplicity, even it's gonna touch. So you'll choose touches at x equals the negative four. And then the greater zero, which would be positive five, which also has a multiplicity of two, that goes there. And then on this one, same thing touches and it touches at x is five. So it's a positive x to the fourth and I know it's going to touch in two places. It's probably going to end up looking like this where it touches here and here because it's got that parabolic look. <laughs> That's a bad picture. Okay. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, determine the maximum number of turning points. Since we had a positive x to the fourth, four minus one equals three. At most, there'd be three turning points. Okay, and then you're going to pick the graph, and I already gave it away. It is C. It has, since it's a positive x to the fourth, both ends have to be going up, right? Both ends go up. It's an even exponent, so either both ends are up or both ends are down, but because it's a positive and it's an even, 
both ends go up. So there's only one where both ends are going up. It's this one. But you can also see that it has three turning points. It has a turning point here, it has a turning point here, and it has a turning point there. And then the x-intercepts were, was it negative four and positive five, the zeros, negative four and positive five. So that's where it touches. And that's number six. And then number seven. Uh, analyze this function. Okay, now this one is not given to you in factored form, which is going to make finding the zeros or the x-intercepts, you know, you're gonna have to do a little work on those. So this one, they already have it in multiplied out form. <clears throat> so I can already see that the x to the third is what goes right here. x to the third. Why I left a whole page to work that out, I don't know. I didn't need to at all. Sorry, that was a waste of space on that slide. <clears throat> all right, so that's that. Then they want the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are, I'll go back to the previous slide to show the work for that. Okay, the x-intercepts, so for part B, x-intercepts. That is when the f of x is equal to zero. So we're going to stick a zero right where f of x is, okay? So zero equals x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. Now factor. Okay, well, I have an x squared. I have an x, sorry, I have an x cubed, then I have an x squared, and then I have a minus 2x. The one thing that they all have in common is an x. So, zero is going to equal, I'm going to factor out an x from all three of these, so it's like you're literally going to say, well, what is x cubed divided by x? That's what goes here. And what is x squared divided by x? That's what goes here. And what is 2x divided by x? That's what goes right there. So x cubed divided by x would be an x squared x squared divided by x would be an x. And 2x divided by x would be a 2. And then I would still have the plus sign here and the minus sign there. <clears throat> but I'm not done because the stuff inside the parentheses can be unfoiled. This x squared splits here and here. So that's an x and that's an x because x times x is x squared. Then this minus 2 is going to be last times last. So one of them, ha if, if it's a 2, there's only two choices, 1 times 2. That's it. Or sorry, one choice. There's only one choice with those two factors, 1 times 2 but you gotta place the signs carefully because your signs have to add up to a positive one in the middle. So I would need a negative one and a positive two. Negative one and positive two adds up to the positive one X in the middle and negative one times positive two for last times last gives me the negative two. So now that I have it factored all out, I'm gonna come here and I've got zero is equal to x times x minus one times x plus two, and my x intercepts are 
this guy here would just be x is equal to zero, zero, comma. This next one, x minus one, that would have to be a positive one, comma. And this guy, x plus two, if that is equal to zero, he would be a negative two. Those are my x-intercepts. They're also my zeros. Now the y-intercept is when x is zero. So So I'm going to go up to this function, which is f of x is x cubed plus x squared minus 2 times x. If I stick a 0 where all the x's are, hello, that'd be 0 plus 0 minus 0, which last time I checked was 0. 0. I'll give you a little hint. If one of your x-intercepts is 0, that's also your y-intercept because that is the origin. If you have an x-intercept of zero, your graph is crossing the origin and that's automatically your y-intercept because polynomial functions only cross the y-axis one time. So the x-intercept is the origin, that is your y-intercept. But, you know, you can plug and chug the zeros and see for yourself. It is zero. Booyah! All right, what do we get next? Determine the zeros. Well, that is the same three answers that I just gave back here. They were zero, one, and negative two. So I'm just going to plug them in here in black. Zero, one, and negative two. But you've got to figure out the um, multiplicity of them all. When we factored it, we had, we had that. And as I recall, okay. We did this one, this was x is equal to zero with a multiplicity of one. So the smallest zero, well, let me do the other ones. This was x is equal to one with a multiplicity of one. And this was x is equal to negative two with also a multiplicity of one. Now who is our smallest? The smallest zero would be the negative two, which is in blue. The smallest zero is my blue one. It is a multiplicity of one. So the graph crosses at the x-axis at x equals the negative two. All right, the middle zero, let's see what's in the middle. If you're not sure, draw yourself a number line and place those three numbers on the number line. This would be negative two. The next number that's largest would be zero. And then the next largest number would be one. There they are from smallest to largest, left to right, blue, green, red. So green comes next. The middle zero has a multiplicity of one. So the graph crosses at x is equal to zero. And then the largest zero is also a multiplicity of one. So the graph crosses at x is equal to one. Okay, y'all got that? That is color coding at its finest right there. I took a class, color coding 101. 
right after paper stapling and paper clipping. Oh, somebody just left on that joke. All right, <laughs> and then part D, determine the maximum number of turning points. Well, this guy was an X cubed, right? That was my degree. It had a degree of three. So it'd be three minus one, which is two. So dose. And now pick the graph, any graph. Well, it is a positive X cubed, all right? We have a positive X cubed, so it should have the basic shape of something like this, where one end is going up and the other end is going down, and the end that is up is pointing, it, the whole graph ends going in the positive direction. So it starts pointing negatively, but then finishes up pointing upwards. So A is out because this one ends going downwards. B is okay, it ends going upwards. C ends going upwards, but D ends going downwards. So D is out. So it's B or C. At most, you have two turning points. That one has two, B has two turning points. C only has, actually, it doesn't have any turning points, which is possible. But where was it? I know that this thing should cross the x-axis at negative two, zero, and one. crosses at negative two and zero and one. We have our winner, it's choice B. The only thing C does, it looks like it crosses at the origin, but that's it. And that was my last slide for 5.2. Does anybody have any questions? small class today. Does anybody need me to go into my math lab and do anything there? I'm not going to start on 5.3 today, so I've only got about 10 minutes left, so I thought I'd open it up to any questions if you all wanted any. Otherwise, class is over. No questions from me. Okay, Caleb's good. If you don't have any questions, you can head out. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I already voted through over mail. Awesome. I went down to court to try to vote today, and the line was forever long. So I said, nope, I'll get up and do it in the morning. Yeah, Are you voting for Kanye West as well? No, he's not on the ballot. Oh, seriously? Yeah, he wasn't on the mail-in ballot. Oh, darn it. How could he be on the mail-in ballot, but not on the other ballot? ballot? Yeah, I'm no, having trouble with that. He wasn't on it. Hmm. Weird. How long ago did you do a mail-in ballot? Oh, uh, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks, something like that. Wow. Huh. No, it couldn't have, been, couldn't have been three weeks. Probably like a week and a half ago. Probably more along the lines. Interesting. All right, well... Bye, if you don't have any questions. See you later, thank you for class. You're welcome. <clears throat>